Welcome to the Siemens VersaCharge AC Series installation and setup video. This video is intended for qualified personnel as defined by all local electrical codes and the NEC. In it, we'll guide you through the installation of the VersaCharge AC Generation 3 charger on a Siemens commercial post. For information on installing the post, please refer to the post installation guide. The rating of the circuit breaker required for this installation is based on the amperage rating of the charger. A 40 amp charger requires a 50 amp breaker, and a 48 amp charger requires a 60 amp breaker. Once the Siemens VersaCharge AC charger post has been installed, it's time to mount and install the VersaCharge charger. To reduce the risk of electrical shock, never service, install, or uninstall this VersaCharge while power is flowing to the unit. First, install one or two plastic mounting brackets onto the metal bracket with the included screws. The metal bracket is supplied with the post. Next, hang the charger by sliding the VersaCharge onto the bracket via the hinges, and then remove the two access covers on the back of the charger. Find the dial and set the amp switch. Do not exceed the amount of amperage the model can handle. If hardwiring the unit, route conductors onto the VersaCharge from the conductor opening with proper strain relief. Then pull three to six inches of slack through the conductor opening. Next, you'll need the ferrite core, which is supplied in the resealable plastic bag or was reserved when the plug was removed. Slide the ferrite core over the black and red wires only and into position. The green wire or ground should not be placed through the ferrite core. Slide the copper wire conductors into the VersaCharge L1, L2, and ground from the connected conduit. Torque all lugs to 14 and a half pound inches with a screwdriver. If you're using an ethernet port connection, push the ethernet cable through the rubberized gland. Make sure the cable connector is not attached to the Ethernet cable when pushing it through the gland. Then snake the Ethernet cable up through the back to the opening. Now connect the Ethernet connector to the cable and then insert it from the bottom up into the Ethernet port. If using a SIM card, open the access panel on the right of the SIM card hardware. The SIM card sits next to the Ethernet connection. Slide the micro SIM card into the slot from the bottom upward until it stays in place. To remove or replace the SIM card, press it upward and it will spring down and out of the slot. Both parent and child models come with the Modbus RS-485 serial cable. To connect using Modbus, attach the connector, which is also the multi-connector tool, by gently pressing the connector into place. Push the external Modbus cable through the rubberized gland at the back of the charger and attach the external wires to the internal wire connector. Gently tuck the wiring into the space. Now verify the Modbus data is set up and communicating to your control system. One way to do this is to download and install QModmaster to set up and test querying the chargers. If you're using Siemens control or building management systems like DeSego CC or WinCC, you can use their Modbus importer features to configure and communicate to the chargers. For additional setup information, check out the Modbus section in the charger manual. Next, set up the Modbus communication by setting the termination switch. This switch should be in the on position for the parent unit or in the off position for a child unit Unless it's the last child in the daisy chain, then it must be on. Any devices connected on the Modbus RTU, including the child, converter, and other instrumentation, must be wired as follows. Connect the shield of each cable segment to ground at one end only. Isolate cables as much as possible from sources of electrical noise. Install a quarter watt termination resistor, or RT, between the positive and negative terminals on the last device in the straight line bus. This reduces noise interference on the RS-485 serial communications wire. The resistor should match the nominal impedance of the RS-485 cable, which is typically 120 ohms, but double check the manufacturer's documentation for the cable's impedance value. Do not use T methods, 
and no more than two cables should be connected at any connection point on the RS-485 Modbus daisy chain. VersaCharge has a remote control interface to control the charger from an external device. This could be building automation systems, digital sensors, demand response switches, and more. To sync to these devices, you must connect the multi-use connector from the bag and wire an additional remote control interface cable to pins number 7 and number 9. Connect to the multi-use connector by gently pressing it onto the connector. Then press the remote control cable through the rubberized gland at the back of the unit without the connector attached. Once you have completed the necessary installation steps for your VersaCharge model, close everything up and move on to commissioning. Replace the access covers on the back and secure the barrier with the two screws you removed earlier in the process. Replace the hinged cover and secure it with four Phillips head screws. Swing the unit closed until the bracket clip engages and secure the charger with the tamper-resistant security screws. Then use the kit-supplied tamper-resistant screw to secure the charger cover. Use the second screw underneath the charger to secure the front cover and install the holster by aligning it with the guides in the charger. With the third kit-supplied tamper-resistant screw, secure the holster to the charger. Finally, turn the circuit breaker for this circuit to the on position and turn on the charger. You have completed the installation of the VersaCharge AC charger. Now it's time to set up and commission the charger.